This guide shows you how to download and install Gramps, which is genealogical research software. It's a great alternative to the Family Tree Maker and is available on Linux, Windows and Mac. You can also import your Family Tree from Family Tree Maker. So all you need to do is open your web browser. Now I'm going to open Microsoft Edge on my Windows based PC. And once Edge is open, go to the address bar right at the top of the screen, not the search bar at the middle of the screen, the address bar right at the very top. Click in there and delete out anything that might be in there. And then you need to type Gramps, G-R-A-M-P-S hyphen project dot org and then press enter or return on your keyboard or tap go. And then after a few seconds, you should see this page appear. Move your mouse over download just here, left click once, and then move your mouse over download gramps and again, left click once. This page will now appear, scroll down, and what you need to do is you need to find the installer that's relevant to your operating system. So there you go, you've got Linux there, you've got Windows there. A bit further down, you've got Mac OS on there as well. So mine's a Windows system and I've got a 64-bit Windows system. So I'm just gonna click this one here, Windows installer, 64-bit, and then some numbers after it, which is the version number. Now that will change over time, the version number. So move your mouse over that, left click once, and then if you're using Microsoft Edge like I am, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, it downloading. Now this will also apply to if you're using Chrome. I think if you're using Firefox, it'll be up in the top right-hand corner of the download. You'll see a little arrow, click on the arrow and you can then see how well the download is doing. But like I say, in the new Microsoft Edge and Chrome, it'll be in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And at the moment, it's just scanning for viruses and we're just waiting for scanning for viruses viruses to disappear or if you in the case of if you're using Chrome you have some figures underneath the file name so okay it's now downloaded we've got an option to open file so we can move our mouse over the file name and left click if we want but if we're using a different browser and we want to find the download I'll show you how to do that let's just close down the browser by clicking on the close button up in the top right hand corner. Click on any yellow folder on your computer. If you can't find a yellow folder, click on the start button and then click on documents just there. And that shall open up Explorer. Then find downloads on the left hand side here. Any one of these will do. Click on that and you should see, there you go, somewhere in downloads, it should say Gramps, A-I-O and some numbers. So let's double left click on that. And then after a little while, it will ask you, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Well, as long as it says Gramps, AIO, and then a set of numbers there, then it's okay to say yes to that. So move your mouse over yes, left click once. Now the setup wizard begins. So move your mouse over next, left click once, read through the agreement there. And if you agree to that, then move your mouse over, I agree, left click once. And it's asking us here, do you want to install for anyone on this computer or install just for me? Well, just leave it as install for anyone using this computer, I would recommend. So just left click next. Then it asks us whether we want to install optional components. I would just say go with whatever's already pre-selected. Move your mouse over next, left click once. And it's asking us now, where do we want to install it? Well, if you're not sure what you're doing, then just go with what it's showing you already. So just move your mouse over install and again, left click once. It will now start to install. Now this bit might take a bit of time. It might look like it's frozen from time to time. Please be patient with it, just let it run. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and we'll come back to it nearing the end of the installation. And there we go, it's now completed. So move your mouse over next, left click once. And then it gives us the option whether or not we wanna run it straight away. So I'm just gonna untick that box just there for a second and then move your mouse over finish, left click once. And now we don't need this installation file anymore. If we wanna download Gramps again, um, we can re-download it from the website. We don't need to keep it, it'll just clog up the computer. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click the delete button just up there 
and then it will say, are you sure that you want to move this file to the recycle bin? Well, as long as it says Gramps, AIO, and then a set of numbers, move your mouse over yes, and left click once. And there you go, that's now gone to the recycle bin. And uh, if you want to, you can click on the cross just up here in the top right hand corner to get rid of that. And you can empty your recycle bin if you want. So just by right clicking on the recycle bin and then left clicking empty recycle bin, then move your mouse over yes, left click once. Okay, so now we've got Gramps installed on the computer. Find the icon on the desktop, double left click on it. It may take a little while to open. Again, just be patient with it. And here we go, Gramps now opens. So I'm just gonna close this window for a moment and I'm just gonna maximize the Gramps window just by clicking on that box just up there in the top right hand corner. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just gonna change where it saves the family tree files because it does put them out of the way a bit and it's not in an easy place to get to if you want to make a backup copy, which of course you'll want to because you won't wanna lose your family tree. So move your mouse over edit just up here, left click once and then move your mouse over preferences and left click once and then move your mouse over the family tree tab just up there and again left click once so there you go as you can see the family tree database path says that it's in the app data folder under roaming gramps and gramps db so what i want to do is i want to put that really in the my documents folder just so that we uh, keep it with all our other stuff and it just makes it easier to back up if we want to at a later date so let's just click on that little icon just there to the right of the path. And then all we do is we click on documents there, just on the left, click once on that. We need to create a folder to put our family tree file in. So move your mouse over this picture of the folder just up there in the plus and left click once. And we're just gonna call this Gramps. So we call it Gramps and then move our mouse over Create and left click once. Okay, and then move your mouse over Apply and again, left click once. Now it does give us an option to choose a backup path as well. So if you've got a USB stick, you can plug that in now and choose it to back up to a USB stick. Or if you use a cloud-based system such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, then uh, you can get it to save in there if you've got the application installed on your system. So just move your mouse over the little folder just there. And this is purely optional and you can choose the path that you want to save it to. So uh, that'll be here on the left. If it's not there, then go into local disk C and find the path from there. So for instance, I'm gonna save it to OneDrive my uh, backup file. So I've clicked on local disk C, I'm gonna double click users, I'm gonna double click my name, and we're gonna find OneDrive in here. There's OneDrive just there, gonna double click that. And again, I'm gonna make a folder for it to back up to. So move your mouse over the little folder icon just in the top right hand corner there, left click once, and I'm gonna call that um, Gramps Backup. Okay, and then I'm gonna move my mouse over create, left click once, and then move your mouse over apply, and again, left click once. And then we can just close this just by moving our mouse over close, and again, left click once. So, what we need to do now is we need to create or import a family tree. So we can click on family trees up there and then click on manage family trees and we can click on new. So whether or not, whether we're importing one or creating a new one, we still have to create a new family tree. So I'm just gonna call this family tree. I'm just gonna call it test because that's all I'm doing. I'm just using this as a test. So I, I click uh, type test, okay. And then double click on test and the family tree then loads and then we've got options there. We can add people, we can add relationships, families, charts, events, places, all sorts of things. If we want to import a family tree that uh, we've had in the family tree maker, you need to go into the family tree maker first of all and export it to a, a GEDCOM file, just a standard GEDCOM file, 5.5 I believe and UTF. And uh, then we can just come into here, click on family trees and then click on import. Find our file 
that we exported from Family Tree Maker. So I've put mine in documents there and I've just called it Pera. So uh, I'm just gonna double click on that. And I'm gonna blur this out because obviously this has got personal information in, but it's just loading the Family Tree now. And uh, like I say, this was imported from Family Tree Maker, or sorry, exported from Family Tree Maker. So here we go, it says import statistics, results, done. So move the mouse over, close, left click once. And it's telling me here that it couldn't import some things and that's because I'm trying to import this onto a new computer. And what I haven't done is I haven't brought across the folder where I saved all the photos in. So uh, it's, it's not able to, uh, to import those. Now, if you did want to import photos as well that you'd saved in the Family Tree Maker and you're installing this on a brand new computer, then you need to make sure that for one, when you've created the username for this computer, it matches the username of the old computer and the place where you had your Family Tree Maker photos is in exactly the same place on the new computer and then it will automatically link them up. But uh, I mean, I must admit, I'm not too worried about the photos in this instance because it is just a test. So I'm just going to close this. And even though I've had to blur this out, like I say all the information has been imported now. We've got charts here. A great little free alternative to the Family Tree Maker. I'm sure that uh, you'll love it. I hope this guide helps. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at CWTech. That's at CWTech on Twitter. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my YouTube channel. Just Google Chris Waite YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support.